<clears throat> Good evening, everyone. How's everybody? I think we have There's something wrong with this mic. One, two, three. Maybe I. One, two, three. Yeah, mute, mute. Gun. Uh, yeah, it was it wasn't mute. I muted it. <clears throat> All right, guys. Uh, good evening, everyone. How's everybody? Good. Yeah. Chetan, how are you? Very good. I'm good, thank you so much. And um, what's your name? Huh? Rohit. Rohit, how are you? Yeah. Good. Rahul, how are you? Good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. What's your name, dear? Nitiksha. Nitiksha, uh, nice to meet you. Are you from Gujarat back home? Okay. Nitiksha, nice to meet you, Nitiksha. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. Uh, for those people who have just joined us, uh, this is the live grammar session that we do every day. And the purpose of this grammar session is to understand and learn different grammar rules in the context of uh, <clears throat> collocations could be the tenses and we go through different rules uh, once we start this grammar uh, session and it's beneficial for any of the testing systems whether you're doing pt ielts or any other testing systems in australia so this is we are in that's pt we are uh, for those students for those online students which are not part of uh, part of this in that's pt um uh, we are this we have cre created a facebook page in that's grammar uh, where we where you get all the links and this is this is a link you can also get access to this link even after even if you miss this five to six uh, six p.m session uh, you can still open that link and um, learn these uh, grammar rules and you're always welcome for any queries that you have related to either grammar rules or or uh, just uh, the testing system. You can just leave us a message uh, in the inbox and we'll respond to you, we'll get back to you. All right, guys, uh, so we are going to cover uh, seven uh, important grammar rules uh, that we, this is a, gra th these grammar rules, we do it in a cycle. Like after every three months or two months, we keep on repeating uh, some important grammar rules that you need to, uh, of course, um, be aware of. So, um, yesterday we did a rule. We'll, I'll start with uh, the last rule of yesterday, la last grammar rule of yesterday. And that particular rule was related to pay or paying something. So, the sentence was something like this. I have, I'm having a lot of problems. Paying my bills or pay my bills? See, this was the last sentence we did yesterday. How many of you were present? You were present yesterday. What do you think the answer was? Paying my bills, yeah? Because of the problems. You talk about problems, you use verb plus ing, paying the bills. All right. Let's start today's grammar class, guys. And I'm going to start with my first and let, let me type it here and for example, now look at me, everyone. Um, if you see a skyscraper, have you ever come across sky, ever come across this word called skyscraper? What does it mean? Oh, a building which is extremely tall, has got a lot of levels. You call that skyscraper. You can also call them levels. And you can also call them stories, yeah? So three stories, four stories, four levels, five levels, something like this. Now, if I have a sentence, which I'm going to write, let me write it here so it'll be a little bit more clear. And the sentence says, <clears throat> okay. 
Can you look at the sentence, yeah? And what does it say? This building is 20 stories tall. Can you tell me? Here I'm, giving, I'm, I'm talking about the length, yeah? The height, actually. Height of the building. And I say that, that this particular building, this particular skyscraper has got these many levels. How many levels am I talking about here? 20. But... This sentence, this building is 20 stories tall. Do you see something very fishy here in this sentence? Do you think that this, there's something not right in this sentence? Or do you, do you think that there's, there's a mistake in this sentence? If you think, what is it? Sto the spelling of? Stories, really? Oh, I forgot your name, sorry. Raj. Raj thinks that it should not be stories, S-T-O-R-I-E-S. You think that it should not be stories? What, what should it be then? S-T-O-R-E-Y-S? Mm. Rahul, what do you think? You don't think at all, yeah? You think that it shouldn't be... St now, guys, this is an important rule you need to learn here. Number one, of course, this spelling that I have used here is wrong because this is a plural of story so when you say s t o r y story which means like a tale yeah so t a l e tale yeah so it's a story kahani yeah like a tale so here i'm not talking about kahani or a tale i'm talking about the level yeah level 1 level 2 level 3 and in british english you call it story s t o r e y S-T-O-R-E-Y. And when you have to say a lot of levels, a lot of stories, you never end the word with I-E-S. You end the word with Y-S. So S-T-O-R-E-Y-S. So this word here is wrong. It should have been S-T-O-R-E-Y-S. This building is 20 stories tall. Can you still find a mistake here? Well, there's definitely something wrong with the sentence. Although this part, stories, is right because it's plural of story. But there's definitely long, something wrong with the sentence, yeah? Shouldn't it be this, this building is a 20-story tall? Or this is a building 20-story tall? Let's, let me give you, let me explain it in a little bit more. Let me write a sentence here. How about this? He is, five, he is five year, he is five years, he is five years old boy. He is five years old boy. What do you think of this sentence? Now, let me tell you what this grammar rule is, and you will learn it, and you will learn it once for and all. If you have a sentence that ends with an adjective in the end, ends with an adjective in the end. Adjective could be anything, like tall, is, is tall not an adjective? Tall building, yeah? Uh, smart building, uh, smart building, yeah? Smart procedure, tall building, yeah? Tall, tall boy, yeah? Uh, short boy, tall, short, high, low, these are all adjectives. If your sentence is finishing with an adjective, yeah? So, your, when you read it like this, now let's say, for example, I will write it something like this. When I say, he is dash, yeah, old. Now, Five year, six year, seven year, but the sentence is finishing with, I'm talking about age here, but the sentence is finishing with old. What is old? Old is an adjective. So old, new, contemporary, modern, these are all adjectives. But if my sentence is finishing with an adjective, the sentence will be written this way. He is five years. He is five years. So this word will be a plural Word, he's five years old. Similarly, this word, 
has to be a plural word. It should be, this building is 20 stories tall. So, so far, both of them are okay. But if the sentence doesn't fit, so when the sentence finishes with an adjective, the verb before it, the noun before it will be a plural noun. So, 20 stories tall, 5 years old, yeah? But if the sentence doesn't finish with an adjective, it finishes with a noun. It finishes with a noun. You cannot write something like this. He is five year. He is five year. Uh, he's five years old. Boy. If you write something like this, the sentence will be wrong. Let me write it here. Because the sentence this time doesn't finish with old, it finishes with boy. The sentence finishes with boy, it doesn't finish with old. Here, the sentence would be the appropriate way of, so th let me write it here. So these sentences are right. And this one is right too. Yeah. Uh oh. So this sentence is right too. Yeah? But what you can do with these sentences, how can we correct this wrong sentence? He is five years old boy because it's finishing with noun. So the right way to write this sentence is he is a five and then hyphen year and then hyphen old and then boy so what did i use here i used then i used an article article a beforehand and then this word before it year wasn't plural any more this is a singular word so this sentence is 100 percent right so so easiest way to memorize this one is this rule is that when you when you talk about quality of someone, yeah, so when you say he's, he's, for example, can I say something like this? My daughter is six years old. Right or wrong? Six years old. It finishes with an adjective, old. Yes, I can say years, six years old. Or I can say she is a, she is a six year old girl. She is a six year old girl. Something like this. Because this is a grammar rule, you have to put hyphen with it. Now I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a next, I'll give you a next example for this one. It'll be more clear. How can we write this building? How can we write uh, uh, this sentence? Sentence number one: This building is twenty stories tall. There's another way we can write it. How can we write it? Let me write it, it here as number two. This is a. Kaise hoga? This is a twenty hyphen story. This is a 20 story hyphen tall, tall building. Yeah, so this is a 20 because this time we know this sentence is right because the sentence finishes with a noun. And we didn't say story, stories, we said story. So two ways. So either I can say uh, this building is 20 stories tall or I can say this is a 20 story tall building. Is it clear? So whenever somebody says to you from now on that uh, my daughter is five year old, is it right or wrong? It's wrong because it should be five years old. Or you can say, I have a five year old daughter. Yeah, this PT coaching center is uh, 10 years old, right or wrong? Correct, 10 years old. Or this is a 10 year old PT coaching center and the sentence finishes with a noun PT coaching center is it clear did you understand this one now I have a question for you and this question is to uh, let's ask this to Rohit yeah Rohit, if I write a sentence like this Rohit what do you think about this sentence let me actually put it here so that you guys don't get confused let's put it here So something like this. Now, Rohit, this question is for you. So this one is right. Let me put it in the bracket. This one is right. 
Now, Rohit, this question is for you. I will write a sentence and you tell me what do you think about this sentence, yeah? And the sentence is... Tell me, Rohit, what can you see there? What does it say? I have a five pages long book. Is this sentence right or wrong? Compare it. Is this sentence right or wrong? I have a five pages long book. Rohit, what What are you thinking? This sentence is 100% wrong. How is it correct? Because the sentence finishes with a noun. Yeah, it should be, I have a five page Page, not pages. I have a five page long book. Five page long book. But if, so this one is wrong. What if I say, what about this? Yeah, if I say something like this. Yeah, this book is five pages long. How about this sentence? The sentence finishes with long, and long is an Adjective and the, when, when the sentence finishes an adjective the word immediately before it will be a plural noun. So this sentence is right Yeah, and this sentence is 100% Wrong because it should have been let's correct it. How can we correct it below this? I have a five Pages na bolke. I have a five page long book. This makes this sentence 100% right Is it clear guys? Did you? If it is, oh, who says this book is one page long? Yeah, <laughs> no. So you never ever say something like. So yes, if you have something like this, um, he is. You will. You can say. You can put it this way. This is a one page long book. Yeah. Or this. This book is one pages long. Is it clear? Even if it is one, you will still put pages. Is it clear? Did you understand this one? So uh, uh, he uh, he uh, so for for example something like this. Uh, he's one he he's a one year old boy or he's one years old. Is it clear? See my point? So he's one years old or he is a one year old boy. Is it clear? So number get rid of the numbers. Understand the rule here. Is it clear, guys? Did you did you ever make a mistake in this? Who said yes? No, no mistake here. Whew, I think we are done with this rule, yeah? yeah? Let's come to the next important rule, yeah? <clears throat> and put it here. How about if I write a sentence like this, yeah? Tell me, guys, what do you think about this? Yeah? Uh oh, sorry. What do you think about this? Yeah? People will be benefited with. Okay. People will be benefited. Uh oh. Oh, sorry. Benefited. Ho oh, oh. People will be benefited with the special material. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this sentence? Can you tell me? Is this right or wrong? People will be benefited with special material. This is using the British and American. It's single T is British. That's what we follow. B-E-N-E-F-I-T-E-D. Or benefited. Double T. So you tell me now. Is this sentence right? Or let, let me make it easier for you. Let's do it this way. People will get benefit from the special material. Okay. 
Huh, now tell me, what do you think about this sentence? People will, people will get benefit from the special material. Who thinks this is right? There's a rule that you have to learn and you have to understand when we use benefit as and when not to use. There are only two ways of using benefit and we will learn both of them today here. Uh, when it comes to the native speakers, native speakers use benefit in two different ways. Uh, what are those ways? We'll learn it today. So if you have something like this, people will get benefit or even if you have something like this, people will be bene benefited by special material yeah both of these sentences are 100 percent wrong why are they wrong that's what you need to learn in this particular rule now look at this benefit can be used in two ways how many two ways either something like this so there are in this particular case there are two types of benefit has got two nouns associated with it one somebody that gives the benefit or somebody that gets the benefit somebody that is the benefit receiver the benefit giver and the benefit receiver so here who is the benefit giver who is giving the benefit or what is giving the benefit in this case in this case the benefit giver is the special material and who is the benefit receiver in this case? The benefit receiver is people or students in this case, in your case. So now you have to understand, now let me write this. The two important rules for this one is the benefit giver, let's write it here. Yeah. The benefit giver, yeah. Benefits. Benefit receiver. Is it clear? So if the sentence structure is like this, the benefit giver, they have put it at the beginning, followed by benefit receiver, you will write the sentence like this. How would you write it? The special material, now use this grammar rule. Can, how can we write the sentence? The bula, special Material, uh oh, sorry. The special material benefits, Bola, the special material benefits people. Government is giving free public transport to citizens. Yeah, how can you write this? The government benefits the citizens is it clear not benefits to not benefits towards not benefits of not so government so benefit giver benefits the benefit receiver yeah is it clear are you following my point here so this is way number one or let, let's make it a here of the grammar rule so benefit giver benefits the benefit receiver could be benefit as well if the noun is if the benefit giver is Plural noun. So, for example, teachers and students. So, can I say teachers benefits? Nah, it can, it has to be teachers benefit. Teachers benefit students when it comes to PT material. Yeah, when it comes to special material, something like this. Yeah. So, for example, uh, Asad is lending me pen. I don't have a pen, so Asad is helping me with the pen. So, who's giving benefit to who? Asad is giving benefit to me. So, I would say Asad benefits zishan in terms of the in terms of lending the pen is it clear so something like this or there's a second way of writing this same structure when you let's let's put it here okay Ooh, what is happening Yeah. 
So let's write it here. So the second structure is if you have benefit receiver at the beginning, let's write something like this. This time the special material benefits people. Na bolke, if I bring if I bring the benefit receiver and put it at the front, how can I write this sentence? The people or people, people, this time I will not just use benefit, I will use benefit from. I will use benefit from. People benefit from the special materials. Is it clear? So people benefit from special or special material. So this time what is people? People is the benefit receiver. And who is the benefit giver? Special material. You see what sort of structure did I use here? Let me highlight it. I used benefit from. Is it clear? So let's write this rule here. So benefit receiver Bracket me kya hoga? Bolo. Benefits. Benefits from. Benefit. <coughs> benefit giver. Yeah. So. Yes. So the benefit receiver benefits from the benefit giver. So something like this. How can I convert the second sentence? How can I write it? Let's ask this to Rahul. Rahul, batao, kaise likhoge? Second sentence. Benefit receiver. Samne lake. Who's the benefit receiver? Citizens. So kaise bolenge? The citizens benefit. Can I say benefit? The citizens benefits. The the citizens benefit and just benefit. The citizens benefit the government. Now, the citizens benefit from the special material. The, the, the citizens benefit from the government policies. So, the citizens benefit from the government. Is it clear? So, two rules. So, Will I ever say, now come back to this, will I ever say people will get benefit from the special material? Correct it. Who can correct it? People will? So who is, the, who, is, who is the benefit giver? So benefit giver is special material. Who is the benefit receiver? People. So don't change the nouns. Keep them exactly as it is. People benefit from the special material. Then it will be right. How about number two? People will be benefited by special material. Again, this is 100% wrong. So, kaise hoga? People, people benefit from the special material. Or let's change the angle. Kaise hoga? The special material be benefits people, not from. The special material benefits people. Yeah? Or the, special, uh, or the special material will benefit people. Or the special material benefited the people. Or the special material will have benefited the people. But not will have benefited from. Benefit from is 100%. Yeah. So, wrong here. Is it clear? Did you understand this? So, in so two structures. So, get. Yeah, get is wrong. You can't use get with benefit. That's what is wrong here. So, you can't use get here anymore. So, let's correct it. Kaise hoga? People will benefit from. Because people is the benefit receiver. So, will, can, uh, have, people have. So, it doesn't matter which what form benefit is in. But you can never put get with benefit. Is it clear? So people will have benefited from, right? People will be, uh, sorry, people will benefit, right? Is it clear? So people will be benefited, wrong. Is it clear, guys? Did you understand this one? So there are two rules of this one. So how about this? Let me give you a quick uh, example and tell me, what do you think about this sentence? Yeah. So if the sentence says, the baby benefits from her mother, right or wrong? The baby benefits from her mother. 100% right, isn't it? What about this? The mother benefits the baby. This is again right, isn't it? Because the mother is the benefit giver. Is it clear now? Whew. Well done. Now let's come to rule number three. Grammar rule number three here. Let me. And tell me, guys, 
Do you know that, oh, oops, sorry. Now, do you know that um, whenever we talk about something that is like a future unrealistic thing, yeah? So something that you didn't get yet, yeah? We talk about dream, yeah? So dream is something which is like unrealistic and it's not practical. It wasn't here. It wasn't realistic. It is unrealistic. We talk about dreams, yeah? We use the, we use the word wish normally, yeah? See, when you use wish, I wish, yeah? He wishes, she wishes, yeah? My, 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 my wife wishes to be polite, yeah? So something like this. So when you say, just an example, when you say, when you use the word wish, yeah? If I write it in a sentence here, let's write it and see. So if I write a sentence, let's write it here, yeah? Who could tell me whether this sentence is right or wrong? Let me write it here. Sorry, guys. A very simple sentence. All you have to tell me is that we're making, we're talking about a dream, a wish. And we say, I wish I can sing well, yeah? Trust me, this is something, I love this grammar rule. When you go through this, you'll love, you love it too. Yeah, you tell me, what is wrong with this sentence? It? I forgot your name, sorry. Raj, Raj tell me. Yeah. Raj thinks it should be, I wish I could sing well. Do you think he's right? Yeah? yeah? Nah, no, Rohit thinks no, it should be. How many think there's a mistake? It should not be, I wish. It should be, he wishes. Yeah? It could be, I wish, it could be, he wishes. It could be anything. But the mistake is not there. Mistake is what he exactly pointed out. Whenever you use wish in a sentence, it will always be followed by simple past. How easy is this? Always by simple past. No matter how good it sounds. I wish I can. I wish I will. Yeah? 100% wrong. It will always be followed by simple past. Yeah? For example, uh, I, 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 want, I, I, I wish, I, I'm making a wish that the airplane should have touched the airport uh, a little earlier or the bus should have arrived a little earlier. It's a wish. So I would write a sentence like this. Will I say, uh, I wish the bus, I wish the bus, so suppose you missed the bus, you're waiting, yeah? you missed the, you're making a wish, uh oh, bus chali gayi, ab main kya karunga? Uh, I wish the bus, I wish the bus come or came. It, it will be simple. Past. I wish the bus came a little earlier. Yeah? Or a little early. Yeah? Something like this. Because earlier requires than. So I wish the bus came a little early. Is it clear? So something like this. Uh, how about this? How about this sentence now? Yeah? I wish. I wish I was a, I wish I was an artist. Let me ask this to a particular uh, student. Uh, Asad, you tell me. What do you think about this sentence? I wish I was an artist. Right or wrong? It should be, I wish I is an artist, yeah? Is this 100% right? It, it should be right because all the rules that we just did, it has to be followed by simple past. I wish I could, so this sentence is wrong, let me write it here, so this, uh, this one is obviously wrong. So I wish the bus came because we're using simple past, so it is 100% right. But when you use I wish I was an artist, why is this sentence wrong? This sentence is 100% wrong, I'll give you the reason for this and this is something that I want you guys to make no mistake from now on when you see these sentences. Whenever you have these to be verbs, what are those to be verbs? Is, am, is, am, are, was, yeah, is, am, was, is, is, am, was, are. So these are all to be verbs. So whenever you have any to be verbs along with the wish, yeah. So for example, what are those to be verbs? Is, am, are, 
was, yeah? All of these four to be verbs, is, am, are, was, will be replaced by were. All of these four to be verbs will be replaced by were. So how would you correct this sentence? I wish I were an artist. For example, uh, I'm committed, yeah? So uh, I want to go back when I was uh, 17 years old, when I was single. So I would say, oh God, I wish I am single. Wrong. I would change it to am. I've used am here. So there, I'm not going to use am anymore. I will use were. So here, how can I rephrase it? I wish I were single. Although I and were never comes together. But this is what the grammar rule is. When you use wish, all those to be verbs, is, am, are, was, will be replaced with were. Is it clear? Did you understand this one? So, when you say, uh, the bus was late. I wish the bus were late. You see? Not was anymore. I wish the bus were late. How old is it? But the entire grammar thing is old as this. And that's what you need to learn. Two rules we have learned here. Number one is that whenever you have word wish, it will be always followed by a... It will be always, fo always followed by a simple past. And if, the, if you have any of these three auxiliaries, uh, sorry, to be verbs, is, am, are, was, they will all be replaced by ver. Is it clear? Did you understand this one? Can you copy this rule, please, everyone? I forgot to open my fast. I was supposed to open it at 5.28. Asad, you have done it? You have Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, now let's come. Did you understand this one? Number three. <clears throat> exactly. I wish I could get my desired score. Uh, is it, it's the same example as this. I wish I could sing well. So it's okay. It's all right. Nothing wrong with this. All right, now. Tell me, guys, how about this sentence? <clears throat> Number four. Let me write it here. Now, in certain cases, when you think that, how about this sentence? Yeah, let me write this sentence first, yeah? Mm, the, <clears throat> the student, why is it, this computer is acting funny. The student was too much tired. The student was too much tired. Now, Raul, tell me, what do you find odd in this sentence? The student was too much tired. Of course, too much is a collocation, you know, when you use too much and so much. Both of them are a collocation, yeah? So too much is used in a negative way and so much is used in a positive way. So for example, when you say too much, too much chocolate. You shouldn't have this much chocolate, but you had too much chocolate. Uh, when you say something like this, um, too much freedom. I have given my uh, son too much freedom. Zarurat se? Zyada. That's what is called too much. It's used in a negative way. So much, on the other hand, is used with in a positive context. Yeah. So when you say something like this, uh, I have so much time left. Yeah. Uh, for example, Mandeep has so much money. Mandeep has so much money. Something like this. Yeah. So much money, money, kya? Positive or negative? Positive. 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 Something like this. But the, in, that's not my grammar rule here. Although we learned something new here as well in this grammar rule, that too much is used for negative and so much is used for positive. Same with many. So many positive, too many negative. So when you say something like this, there were too many people. Money? Negative. Yeah. I expected 20 students, but we didn't have enough chairs because there were too many people. Negative. So many people. Money? Positive. Wow. The artist sang well in the uh, in the auditorium and there were so many people in the auditorium. Positive. But if you say too many people, my artist didn't, didn't deserve these many people. See my point? Too many people. He deserved five or ten fans, but there were too many people. Negative. Yeah. But that's not the grammar rule here. The grammar rule is that uh, whenever you have so and an adjective. Yeah. So let's write it this. So 
or much, uh, sorry, so or two, yeah? These two words, and when the sentence is finishing with an adjective, you will never use much in between. So it will be, kaise hoga? The student was, so and two, it will be immediately followed by a, so two and two will be followed by a, will be immediately followed by an adjective, yeah? So, how would we correct this, yeah? The student, bolo, was too tired. Is it clear? Is it clear? Not too much? Tired. Is it clear? Did you understand this one? How about this? I am so much happy today. Tell me, what do you think about this? I'm so much happy today. Right or wrong? So it should be, so this sentence is 100% wrong. So it should have been, bolo, kaise hoga? I am so happy today. Is it clear, guys? So this is the right way. Whenever you have so and to, uh, you will not use much or many in between. It will be immediately followed by an adjective. So it should be, I am so happy today. So let's write it here. This sentence is 100% right. Is it clear? So very easy, teachy tiny things that we need to take care of. Yeah, so very important grammar rule. All right, next grammar rule, guys. Yeah. Still wrong. It, it will be the student was too tired today. Is it clear? The rule is not whether we have object in the end or not. The rule is that whenever you have so or two, it will be immediately follow, followed by a adjective. So you will not use the quantity many or much in between. Yeah, is it clear? Did you understand this one? Too tired, so tired, uh, something like this. Yeah, uh, uh, too happy, so happy, not so much happy. Yeah, so much disappointed, wrong. So disappointed, I was so disappointed, not so much disappointed. Yeah, uh, uh, it was so pricey. The, 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 uh, the iPhone was so pricey, not it was so many pricey or so much pricey. Is it clear? So pricey. Pro pricey is an adjective. All right. Let's come to the next grammar rule and tell me, what do you think about this grammar rule? Of course, you can say too much. That's what I started with. Too much chocolate. Yeah, wait a minute. That's what I'm saying. Of course, you can say too much. But here, we don't have any adjective. That's not the rule. Yeah. So whenever you have two, an adjective, there will be no much or many in between. Of course, you can say too much. For example, something like this. You know, are you single or married? I forgot your name. Jedi, are you single or married? You're single. So for example, then, then we can use this example. For example, your girlfriend always, you know, gets angry at you. You say, it's too much. I can't handle it anymore. Here, we don't have any adjective here. Of course, you can say too much. That's what I started with. Too much is always negative. And so much is always positive. But not in this context. That's a different. Th that's a different case. How about this sentence? At this question, let me ask this to a particular uh, person. Uh, let me ask this to Shivani. Yeah. So everybody, quiet. If you know the answer, just don't say it. Just stay quiet. Let her. Let her. Let her respond. Yeah. So did she tell you? Uh, tell me, <clears throat> what do you think about this sentence, Shivani? Is it visible? Can you look, can you look at this, Mandi? Tell me, is it visible? Is it visible? Can you look at this, Mandi? What does the sentence say? Did she tell you why she chose you over that boy? Tell me, guys. Is it right or wrong? Do you think it's right? Hmm. She's right? Okay. How about others? Yeah?
tell me. What do you think about this? Chose should, should be replaced by? Choose. So did she tell you why she choose you? Why she choose you? Why she chooses you? She choose or she chooses? Or choose her? Which one? <laughs> should be... It should be chooses, yeah? Tell me. Guys, this is an important grammar rule that you need to learn. And you have already learned it. Mandeep, I expected that you would, you would come up with the answer. Not there are two grammar rules actually three grammar rules here you will you will you will learn here yeah actually three grammar rules here number one that we did yesterday that whenever you use choose you always use over with it yeah didn't we do it yesterday so choose a over b or prefer a to b choose uh, tea or coffee yeah so i will choose tea over coffee or i will prefer tea to coffee so so far from that perspective this sentence is 100 percent right so choose a uh, a over b so overuse ki hai sahi hai all right this part is right the next grammar rule that you need to learn here is that when wh is in the middle if wh is in the middle it will immediately be followed by subject plus verb if the wh is in the middle suppose i want to know why are you late or why you are late i want to know i want to know why you are late wh why and then you are late is it clear so subject plus verb something like this uh, i don't know who you are or i don't know who are you i don't know wh is in the middle who you then subject first and then are i don't know who you are because wh is in the middle it will be immediately followed by subject plus verb that way as well this sentence is 100 percent right yeah because wh why she chose so she is subject and then chooses what verb that way as well this is 100 percent right but why is this sentence 100 percent wrong learn it uh, have i talked about these two things for example asad was sitting at home and he was thinking i'm bored yeah and he thought to himself oh, oh i'm bored what should i do oh let me get married tomorrow yeah for example yeah so he came to the class and he was so excited and he told all the students uh, guys uh, i'm going to get married yeah uh, after half an hour yeah so he announced it in the class you tell me which activity happened first was the decision making activity happen first or did the announcing wala activity happen first? Which activity happened first? Obviously, he decided it and then announced it. Not like Modi, where you announce first and then decide, oh, many kya bola. So, very important. So, here in this case, he decided and then announced. But if I say this story to Mandeep, Mandeep, do you know what? Last week, Asad came to the class he announced but if i'm also talking about the decision decision wala activity i will say uh, mandeep do you know asad had decided to get married before he announced it in the class is it clear so the if there are so the grammar rule is this let me write it here uh, let's write it let me write it here the grammar rule is if we have two activities yeah in from the past yeah in the past if we have two activities in the past one activity okay so let me write this this way the far past yeah the far past activity will be written in past perfect yeah decision he had decided both the activities happened in the past he had decided first and then he announced it. So, decision while activity is the first activity. So, in this case, past perfect kya wa? Had plus third form. So, let's write it here. Had plus verb three. Third form. Yeah. The far past activity and the near past. 
the near past will be written in simple uh -oh, in simple past yeah easy peasy now you tell me now look at this sentence for example before i come to this sentence for example if you have a sentence which says something like this the sentence says um <clears throat> my friend had waited at the airport before i picked him up so what is the first activity waiting activity far past yeah if i'm telling this story to asad asad do you know my friend came to melbourne he had waited at the airport so past perfect because this is the first activity the far past before i Picked him up. Second one is what? Near past. So for the near past activity, you will use simple past. Let me give you one more example and it will be clear. For example, in 2015, I was in England. And in 2000, uh, uh, sorry, in 2010, I was in England. In 2015, I came to Australia. Now, today is 2019. So I will say, guys, uh, I had lived in England before I had come to Australia or before I came to Australia? Before I came to australia in 2015 i lived in i had lived in england in 2010 before i came to australia in 2015 is it clear same thing here the telling wala activity yeah is simple past and the choosing wala activity is past she chose first then she came to disclose it to her friend that's what she that's what the, that's what the choosing wala activity was done first and then, then the disclosing activity came. So this sentence could be rephrased that how can we correct it? Yeah. Did she tell you why she had chosen? Is it clear? Why she had chosen you over that boy? Is it clear? Did you understand the rule? Can you copy this rule, everyone? Can you co copy the entire statement for those people who are watching us online? Uh, of course, you don't have to copy it. <laughs> for others who are in the class. And I have a question for you after you copy. Please, everyone, copy this. Okay, now the, the question is to... The question is to Rahul. Rahul, you tell me. What if I have a sentence like this? Yeah. Uh, so, I, I ate the rice before I slept. Right or wrong? I ate the rice before I slept. Mene khana khaya, baad mein soya. So, I ate the rice before I slept. Right or wrong? It's right. Uh, thank you very much. We finish with this session. Abhi thodi der mene pola. Eating activity is the far past. So for that, what would you use? Had plus third form. So kaise hoga? I had eaten the rice before I slept. Yeah, is it clear? So slept is the near past. Eating is the far past. Is it clear? Did you understand this one? All right. Number six, guys, and this one is such a zabardas rule. Let me write it here. Now. Can you tell me, guys? I need a smart student who can tell me. Wow, look at that. Maninder, tum to zabardast tumne answer de diya. The first thing that is wrong with this sentence, he explained me the problem, is that explain is an intransitive. Oh, yesterday we went through it. Transitive and intransitive, didn't we? Explain is an intransitive verb. And what did we say about intransitive verb yesterday? Intransitive verbs are those verbs that will always be followed by a preposition all the time. Just say, for example, uh, <coughs> follow me. It doesn't need preposition. It's not intransitive. Yeah. Transitive intransitive verbs are those trans or are those verbs which require preposition. Intransitive verbs, preposition must. Is it clear? For example, when you say something like this and say, look at me. What is look? Intransitive. Because it requires a preposition. Look at me. Yeah. What about follow? Follow me. Does it require a, uh, does it require a preposition? Can we say follow off me? Follow, to, uh, follow towards me? No. Nah. Follow me simply. 
verb and object comes together without a preposition. So without a preposition. So here, the, uh, so follow is transitive. So something that requires preposition, you call it intransitive verb. Something that doesn't require preposition, like follow. Yeah, just say for example, when you see something, when you say something like this, tell me, tell me. Does it require preposition? Tell to me. It's it is transitive. Yeah. But when you say something like this, when you say um, uh, when you say something like this, uh, say to me. Say say. You don't say say me. You say say to me. Yeah. So here say is intransitive. Usko maine yaad hi kaise rakha? Into. Into. Into is a word, isn't it? So, so that you don't get confused. Into is a word. Intransitive, mane to is a must. Is it clear? Into. Into is a shortcut of remembering this. Intransitive, to is a must. Mane to mane proposition. Proposition is a must. Into. Intransitive verb, to. Into. Into as a mane yaad rakha. So, the, so here, explain is a verb which requires a preposition and it is an intransitive verb. Explain is a intransitive verb and it requires a preposition. So, kaise hoga? He explained to me the problem let's put it let's put two here yeah he explained to me the problem now maninder my point is that the sentence is still wrong that's what the rule is and i'm going to write because we're going to finish in four minutes so i'm going to write this rule here and you have to learn so let me write it here this sentence is wrong and let's write the sentence let's write the correct sentence now the structure the right structure for this one is explain yeah something to somebody explain something to somebody or someone yeah so somebody or someone explain something to someone this case scenario will be used when something is just one word something is just one word yes say the problem the failure the the cause yeah just one word one word or a fixed term so kaise hoga he explained the problem to me is it clear so let's let's correct it he explained the to me kaoga he explained the prob the problem to me yeah here the problem is just one word so this is just one word so he explained the problem to me but there's another structure for explain and that's what you need to learn here as well so if explain is not sorry if if that something is not just one word it is more than one word it's a clause why are you late it's a clause yeah so this time you will not use explain something to somebody you will say something like this explain to me why are you late so explain to me will come first then you will put the clause what about this? Uh, can you explain your failure to me? Right or wrong? Explain failure to me. Explain the failure to me. Right or wrong? Right, because explain something to somebody. Something is just one word. Explain the failure to me. But if you are saying something like this, why did you fail? Can you explain to me, to me first? Why did you fail later? Is it clear? You see my point? So explain to me, so explain to somebody, Explain to somebody something. And this something, this something is a clause. Yeah? So full clause. It's not just one word. Here it was just one word. So let's say, for example, let's give an example. He explained to me what really happened. Is it clear? He explained to me what really happened did you understand this guys did you understand all those rules that we did, that we did today yeah so yeah that's it guys we finished with the session other branches can you please disconnect and we'll continue with the pt session thank you very much online people who who joined us today thank you so much for connecting